Welcome to the Crystal Beauty Show. Today the show will be done via Skype and we, our guest today is Mr. Hector Echavaria. He's a filmmaker, an actor, and he also does martial arts. Welcome to the Crystal Beauty <coughs> Show and thank you so much for you know, giving me your time and being on the show. Thank you, no problem, it's a pleasure. Thanks. So tell, tell me a little bit about yourself. I, I know you, you started off as a kickboxer while growing up and mm -hmm. suddenly you just you got into film so what what happened why did you get into film what inspired you um well actually it was an accident i went to um um a place to look for a, a studio mm -hmm. um to rent and um i walk into a place thinking it was a a, a rent you know, like a like a rental uh, place, and uh, it was the agency that was doing the uh, PR for Miami Vice, and um, and she says uh, before I leave, she said, you know, you have a great look. Have you considered uh, doing films or television? I said, yeah, one day I'm I'm going to do that, and she got me an interview right away with the director of Miami Vice. Uh, Michael Mann, and he was a fan of martial arts, and I was, you know, a champion at the time. So uh, immediately he wrote something for me uh, in the show, and that's how I started. And then uh, uh, I did some national commercials uh, here in the states, and in Argentina, a producer who was traveling saw the the series and saw the commercials, and they called me to do some movies there. The movie became so successful that it turned out into a TV show. Um, then after the TV show, I came back to the States and I started doing films. So just like one thing led to another, to another, to another. Okay. So um, I would like to talk more about the movie you've just produced recently, um, Chave, Cage of Glory. Yeah. So a little bit about what the movie is about and what inspired it. Yeah, the movie is about a struggling couple uh, trying to pay the bills, okay. and uh, the main character, um, uh, he used to be a fighter, so he does some MMA fights on the weekend just to try to pay for the electricity and the bills, mm -hmm. and um, his, um, the footage of his fight getting to the YouTube, and it uh, has a huge following, so when the organization ran out of uh, opponents for the champion, they decide to give him uh, the chance to compete. Uh, and that's how he get the chance of a lifetime. Uh, he has a kid that is sick, that he needs some um, operation, so he has to make the decision, okay, he's gonna risk his life fighting this guy to save his kid, and then, you know, all the consequences that that bring, and that's how the movie is. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me always. You never give up. Even when you defeat it. I want my money. We've been waiting here for an hour. Well, I don't have your money right now. How'd you do? Not good, baby. Martin's gonna need another operation. His heart is weakening. But don't worry, I got a few interviews tomorrow. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna get something. I know you're trying, baby. You come on for us now. You fought eight times in the last two months for a lousy $200 a fight. Look at your face. This is the guy I was telling you about. He's Mexico, he's America, he's today. Not just somebody, but the dream. Mr. Hector Chavez, really very nice to meet you. But for the first time in my life, there's people out there that love my fighting. You can die giving people what they love. I'm not gonna sit here and watch my son die and you die too. We'll get through this. We'll get through this. <laughs> The Mexican Chavez! Uh, 
and the inspiration I got it because I was uh, I was looking for a story to write for the next movie I was doing. Yeah. And um, I have uh, it was a lot of uh, uh, financial problems. People losing houses and jobs, and so I started studying uh, some of those people, and it was very uh, uplifting for me to find out how just regular people uh, will pull together and do the best to, to go through difficult circumstances and keep their family together. And I thought, well, you know what? That 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 to me is a real hero. You know, that that's a, that's the a story of a hero. And I say, okay, let's 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 do that. Let's let's use this as an inspiration to write something how just a regular nobody can you know uh, pull his family together uh, no matter the circumstances. Uh, and that's how the movie came about. Okay, and what what was the filming process? Okay. Okay. And I wrote the script with uh, a few actors in mind. Uh, I sent the script to the actors, and uh, they I sent it to the agents. They they read it. Uh, I had a great coverage for the for the script, so they give it to the actor. The actor fell in love with the with the project, so they called me back and they said, you know, we really want to do this. And um, I also did some very extensive. Uh, Casting, we saw about 5,000 people for the wife. Um, and, you know, we did a lot of rehearsal and preparation to the picture because we had only uh, six weeks that we needed to shoot uh, because the availability of all the actors were doing other projects. So uh, we, we, we took, uh, you know, uh, about three to four months of just uh, rehearsal and planning the fights and 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 rehearsing the the, the scenes, you know. Okay, so um, the movie will be premiered September 13, and I was just wondering, do you have plans of premiering it in Africa or distributing it in any country in Africa, or is it just gonna be in the U.S.? No, we're definitely gonna go to Africa. Uh, we, uh, I, my uh, head of distribution is working on the foreign. Uh, of course, we have to. Focus first in the United States. We're going to mainly um, work uh, in the States for you know a few months, and then after that, uh, we already have plans to go to all uh, Central and South America, and of course uh, Europe and Africa. Okay, and what are the people that influence you in your filmmaking career? Um, to be honest, uh, my my dad is my was my my biggest inspiration. Um, okay. He was a very uh, you know he was very an, an entrepreneur. Uh, he's always coming with uh, crazy ideas, and and he had a very successful life uh, business wise. And he he was my yeah, best friend, and and everything when I needed to talk to him, you know, he was there for me. So my true inspiration was my dad. Um, as as a filmmaker, uh, of course, I like to study all the all the other filmmakers, mm -hmm. and I really love uh, the word that um, uh, "go ahead, make my day." Uh, what's his name? <laughs> Clint Eastwood uh, has done. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, as a filmmaker, of course, I see every movie. I study. Uh, scripts. Uh, and I, you know, I read a lot of uh, uh, scripts um, uh, from Night Shyamalan. You know, like The Sixth Sense, and I study a lot of the, the scripts just to see uh, the process. And of course, I study the films. And um, Alfred Hitchcock, you know, was an amazing filmmaker. He was uh, he was also a great promoter. So I, you know, I constantly study. Other people that were successful uh, as a filmmaker. Okay, um, most of your films are actually around martial arts. Do you plan on producing something outside of that? Maybe yes. a drama or. Yes, we are uh, actually working on a, the next movie is called Los Muertos that we are right now in pre-production. Okay. And it's uh, an action comedy. Uh, it's a group. It's this group of uh, 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 Latinos. It's a, it's a group of four Latinos that are in a special force operation um, in in Iraq, mm -hmm. and because they're Latino, they're a nightmare for for their bosses. You know, like they never show up on time and all the things that you know the Latinos are known for being bad at. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
but also they are the most loyal. They are the more the more uh, sacrificed. They're the one that save the most lives. So it's it's very funny, you know. It's, uh, and I'm of course working again with uh, Danny Trejo, who is an amazing actor, and we're going to bring other people from Mexico to co-star in the movie. And um, we are uh, talking to Dove Laundry to be the the villain. So uh, we're going to film the movie in uh, half of the movie is going to be shot in Nicaragua because it's supposed to happen in Central America. Um, so, yeah, so definitely uh, the movie after that, we're working on, on another movie called Hell's Dead and it's a horror picture. So definitely we'll be doing other other type of genre too. You know? Okay, that's very good. Where do you hope to see yourself 10 years from now? Um, I, hopefully I will establish uh, my company as a premier a Latino film studio in Hollywood. Okay. I want to focus on on producing uh, Latino films for the United States. The market is, uh, is uh, you know, uh, huge here. Uh, Latinos represent 50% of the ticket sales for a lot of the major studios. Uh, and uh, we never had a voice... Um, just like you know, any other ethnicity, yeah. uh, it's very hard to get your voice uh, to be here and your story to be tell. Uh, I remember when I first moved back to United States, like uh, 13 years ago. I, or the first three years, I just went through the regular process that any other actor or talent will go through in the in the in the city, and uh, you know, I always have to read for you know the the guy. Who is a drug dealer? The guy who is a pimp. The guy who uh, you know cut the grass or clean the house of. And it never was a good part for me to feel proud doing this part. And I thought, wow, this is pretty sickening, you know. Like, uh, yeah. and I, I, I constantly ask, you know, like, um, you know, maybe there's a no, no, the lead, but maybe a secondary actor that's a good guy. You don't have to be the drug dealer, you know, and. Um, and they told me flat out, no, no, that's not the way it works, and that you got to do that part. And actually, they even want me to exaggerate uh, things that they thought that it represent me, which I, it never represent me. Like you know, like have a beer and a, and a big chain of gold. Like we don't do that, you know. Yes. <laughs> like you know, like so I'm going to oh, make my accent thicker rather than try to avoid the accent. So I'm like, wow, you know. So at one point, I just really got sick of the system, and I said, you know what, I want to do something that I want to make my people proud uh, as a human being, as an artist. Uh, and I decided, okay, you know, if nobody believes in me, then if I have to uh, write it and produce it and develop, and all, then I'll just do that. I mean, it's a, it's a tremendous amount of work. But if nobody else is, is doing it, then somebody has to uh, step up and, and speak. Yeah. And, and I'm very proud to be that person that did that. And um, uh, and I hope that the people follow, you know. And, and even if, if they don't, I know I've done my job. So I go every day in bed and I completely pass out because I know I did my best. And, as you know, that's, that's all that counts in life, knowing that you did the best and you were true to yourself. You, you don't try to be nobody else. You don't try to imitate anybody. You just, you're you. And, you know, it's great when, when, when you discover the power that you have, when you just do. Okay. Um, were your family very encouraging when you started your filmmaking career? <laughs> <laughs> My family at the beginning was not. Mm. Um... But I understand it's because you you know you you moving to do something uh, that is out of the comfort zone. Yeah. So um, I I clearly remember when I was fourteen. Uh, well, I I wasn't thinking of film at that time. I was thinking about fighting, and I said that I'm going to move to the states because I was born in a very small city down in Corrientes in the north of Argentina. I said, uh, you know, to my dad and my my two brothers and my mom, you know, I'm going to go on. Uh, leaving the state, and I'm going to be a, a world martial art champions or like a kickboxer champion, and they, they, all of them start laughing at the table, um, and they couldn't stop laughing. <laughs> uh, but you know, but I knew that I'm going to do it. Uh, so it wasn't, you know, it wasn't uh, nothing. I, I just understand that they 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 couldn't see. It. 
in their mind. Um, but as long as I saw it, then, you know, it would be fine. Yeah. <laughs> so what do you do during your free time? I work. <laughs> I don't have a free time. Oh, I work. Wow. Uh, but I love, I love what I do. So mm -hmm. my, my hobby is my work. Okay. So, you know, like I have fun doing what I love. So I work 24 hours a day, even when I'm, when I'm, when I'm taking a nap, when I do take a nap, um, I take a nap, which I call it like a power nap. Like I go and, and find a quiet place and I start running my mind you know, the things that I wanted to accomplish next and, and I visualize a lot. So even when I'm resting, I'm, I'm working, you know, but I find it's the best way for me. To, like I get, I get tense and nervous when I'm in vacation. I can't take it. Like if I go on a vacation for five days, uh -huh. by the second day, I want to kill somebody. <laughs> <laughs> so um, when I was reading your biography, um, it mentioned something about you being a sickly child when you were yeah. growing up. So right now, are you still sickly or was that just with your childhood? No, that was uh, just when I, when I was a, a, a kid. Okay. Uh, I was very sick. I have a uh, severe asthma. I mm -hmm. uh, died actually twice and they brought me back. And Wow. Yeah. So, so my family were, my dad and my mom were very desperate and trying to get something to help me with. So I was doing all kinds of sports, swimming, everything, and even acupuncture. The guy uh, performing the acupuncture was a Chinese uh, master, and he started teaching me Kung Fu. And that's how I started in martial arts. And um, when I was uh, about 10, I had so much training and improved my lungs and all my, my breathing capacity that I, the sickness went completely away. So... That's the other thing, like martial arts really did two great things for me. One is that it saved my life. Mm -hmm. I, I'm here thanks to the martial <laughs> arts. And the second and most important is that I can, uh, if I look back at everything that I accomplished in my life, I know that it was based on the principles and the building of the character that I got from the art. So, you know, the qualities of, a, of being disciplined, stickability, uh, always going the extra mile, uh, working as hard as you can, uh, uh, you know, paying attention to do sacrifices when you need to do them, uh, being able to take pain or, or rejection and don't give up. Yeah. Uh, those uh, principles that shape my character are definitely what it made me uh, the person that I am today. So I'm very grateful to the art, and I know because I constantly promote and teach uh, that it does the same thing for other people. So that's why one of the reasons that I always have a little bit of martial arts in the film. Um, and that's why the films were heavy into martial arts. But as I said, you know, now that we move into all the different type of features, like this is, for example, Chavez is actually really a, a drama that happens in the background of the martial arts of the, what is called today, the mixed martial arts. But... Um, although it's a, a drama, uh, uh, it has in the background with the mixed martial arts. So in the next movie that we do, and all, although it's action movie, of course I have some martial arts fighting within the movie, you know. And I, actually kids and, and audiences uh, love uh, seeing, you know, fights yeah. in the movie. So, um, uh, so that's why I, I, I do it. But also especially because I want to promote for all the things that they've done for me. Nice. So, if you had to choose between martial arts and film, which would you choose? <laughs> huh. uh, before, I, I would say that uh, martial arts quickly. <laughs> <laughs> but um, right now, I'm, I'm very involved with films. I think um, I, will, I will choose films now. And when it comes to films, there's a lot of criticism and you know, negative comments that come along the way. How do you deal with that? Just uh, don't pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I I don't. Uh, um, I have a saying. Uh, or I, I used to train with a, a great master of martial arts. Uh, uh, his name was Ed Parker. He discovered Bruce Lee, and he trained some of the biggest uh, people in in the world. He 
passed away now, but I trained with him. And he told me, look, there's three type of people. The people that talk about what other people are doing, the people that watch what other people are doing, and the people doing it. So never pay attention to the first two. Just be the one doing it. So everybody talk about you and everybody watch you do it. And that's exactly what I do. Okay. So um, what advice would you give to people who want to become filmmakers? You know, uh, it's a tough business. Mm -hmm. But so every business is a tough business. Uh, you know, if you, especially if you want to achieve any level of success, even as a fighter, it's a tough business. Uh, you know, as a filmmaker, it's a tough business. As a doctor, it's a tough business. You have competition, you have this. So my advice is very, very, very simple. It's one, never forget who you are and never try to be anybody else but you because when you are yourself, something great happens. There's so much power in being yourself empowers you, give you all the power that you need. So one, always be yourself. And the second one is never give up. And if you have those two in mind all the time, you keep in mind yourself who you are, how valuable you are, how unique you are, how special you are. And if you never give up, sooner or later, sooner or later, the goal is going to be your. And when you know that sooner or later it's going to be your, it's okay because it doesn't come today or come tomorrow. So those two are, to me, the essence of, of, of any success. Okay. So do you have any last words for our viewers? Um, just be yourself and go out there and kick some ass for me. <laughs> for you. For you. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much for being on the Crystal Beauty Show. And You're welcome. Look, and I hope the movie is going to be a success. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Bye. You have a good day. Bye. Thank you very much for tuning in to the Crystal Beauty Show. As usual, leave your comments. Like our Facebook fan page. Visit our website, which is www.crystalbeautyshow.tv. Subscribe to our channel. And until next time, this is Crystal Beauty saying bye-bye.